Today we're going to discuss the one-source medicine macro strategy for approaching MCAT sections. Before starting a given section on the MCAT, you want to first make a bulleted list with space for each individual passage you're going to encounter. While the car section includes 9 passages, each of the 3 MCAT science sections has 10, so we'll just stick with 10 for our example. This list is going to serve as your roadmap for moving through the upcoming section of the MCAT. As soon as you click start, you should spend roughly 5 to 10 seconds assessing the first passage. How long is it? What's the subject? Is it an experimental passage or an informational passage? The former is notoriously more difficult to wade through, but this is not necessarily always the case. After this initial assessment, assign a score to the passage on your list. Personally, I prefer to use a 1-2-3 scoring system in which 1 is high priority, 2 is mid-level priority, and 3 is low priority. But what does priority mean, anyway? Well, using this system, easier passages should take on higher priority because you're more likely to get these questions right, meaning it's crucial to ensure you have plenty of time to address and appropriately answer all questions associated with passages of this nature. Keep in mind that this is extremely subjective. There are no right or wrong assessments here. The point is to prioritize the passages where you are most likely to succeed. Passages with more questions should also receive a slight bump to their priority as well, since you'll realize more bang for your buck subsequent to investing the time necessary to read through them, all else considered equal. Once you've ranked passage number one, you should move on to passage number two and do the exact same thing. Here you also want to write down the number of the first question associated with the passage, as this will allow you to quickly navigate back to it later. Keep in mind that we're only spending five to ten seconds per passage during this exercise. This is not supposed to be a precise process, you're simply learning the territory prior to crushing the section as a whole. Now let's imagine that once we finish ranking passage number two, we hit next and encounter a standalone question. There are 15 of these interspersed throughout the 10 passages on the science sections of the MCAT, so we're going to run into them with some degree of regularity. Rather than ranking or clicking past these, we're simply going to answer them as we see them. Standalone questions tend to be easier as they are more straightforward and require less consideration of novelty than those attached to notoriously dense MCAT passages. Since these questions are easier, doing them first is a great way to warm up for each new section while simultaneously ensuring that if we do run out of time, we won't leave any of these free points on the table since they'll be finished within the first 15 to 20 minutes of the 95 year allotted for the section. Okay, so now we've ranked passages one and two, and we've answered our first standalone question. At this point, we simply repeat the process, spending 10 seconds assessing, ranking, and noting the number of the first question for each passage, all the while calling on the vast knowledge base obtained via superior preparation under the guidance of the 99.999th percentile MCAT experts at One Source Medicine to crush each of the standalone questions as we encounter them. Fast forward roughly 17 minutes and you'll find that you've already racked up 15 points and created a map for moving through the rest of the section in question. From this point, you simply use the map to determine the order in which you should address the passages, starting with the highest priorities to secure the easiest points while building the confidence needed to tackle the questions you've already deemed likely to be more challenging. The beauty of this approach is that if you end up running out of time, a problem that even the best of us encounter, you're unlikely to do so with easy questions left on the table. This means that if you are forced to sacrifice due diligence on a few questions, they are more likely to be questions you would have struggled with anyway. Therefore, if you employ these simple tactics and stick with them, you can optimize your approach so as to maximally leverage the blood, sweat, and tears you've invested toward completely crushing the MCAT and getting into the medical school of your dreams.